Right. We're going well, to against. Yes, sir. Okay, well, actually, I, I probably won't need the auxiliary sound system here since I'm used to talking in a large room with a lot of people who are not paying any attention <laughs> whatsoever. But anyways, what I'm going to tell you about is going to be a short presentation. It actually complements to a fairly large degree what Lori was discussing because, as you will see shortly, uh, we're going to talk about interfacing and talking about radio astronomy with a group of very young Girl Scouts uh, in the ages between six and eight years old. And you might be thinking, well, you know, that's a little bit too young to get these kids interested in something like radio astronomy. But boy, was I ever wrong to think that. These kids are really sharp. Well, uh, most of us probably don't know that Girl Scouts date back all the way to 1912 when Juliet Gordon Lowe, uh, affectionately known as Daisy, uh, started the first Girl Scout troop. Girl Scouts now are up to 2.7 million girls and 800,000 adults. And you probably didn't know this either, but us guys can be a Girl Scout once you become an adult. So you can actually sign up and mentor these young ladies to help get them headed in a direction that uh, we might like to see them headed in. But so the whole idea was this, this turned out to be the very first activity of the Von Braun Astronomical Society Radio Astronomy Special Interest Group that I'm going to talk about later today. Uh, this was our first organized activity. It took place April 23rd this year. Uh, we had uh, about two dozen girls, six to eight years of age, and the agenda was to introduce them to radio astronomy as well as regular astronomy. Many of the girls had never seen a real telescope. Of course, they heard about it, but not seen one. Uh, we also showed them a planetarium movie, Journey to the Stars, that came from the Museum of Natural History, kind of an over thing, overview thing of astronomy and just the whole mystery of the universe sort of teaser. And then we had our Super Sid station set up and operating, and outside the planetarium is where we set this thing up, we had a solar optical telescope that was uh, operating and manned by one of the regular Von Braun people. Then one of the activities that they have on their astronomy day, which is a real interesting thing, and I'll show you a couple of pictures. The vice president of the Von Braun Astronomical Society, Steve Patrick, uh, has a very special skill. He can make a comet, synthesize a comet, We'll talk a little more about that. And the girls and any, anybody, even I, I stood around and watched it several times. Very fascinating. And then we also had a group. We had like two dozen easels set up outside in the parking lot of the uh, VBAS. And so the kids got a chance to express their interpretation of what happened today in a painting. So we covered the whole gamut, so to speak. I know you can't read this, and I, I can't read it either. It's a little blurry. <laughs> but basically, the idea was to help the girls toward achieving their Stargazer Girl Scout patch. And there's about 20 requirements here. Some are optional, some are required. And as you see over here, depending on where the girls are in age, uh, you, you only have to do a certain number of activities. But it includes uh, learning the planets and uh, heavenly bodies in the solar system and something about the universe in general and lots of other requirements. I think you might be able to read this in the written paper. But uh, we did a lot of these things, probably about half of these things, that very day there at the planetarium. And we included the introduction to radio astronomy, which is currently missing altogether in the Stargazer patch, as you might can imagine. So we did that. Okay, here's uh, 
here's my little Daisy, um, Amelia, and she was, along with her friend Abigail, they were beginning to participate in this comet activity. And uh, basically, we'll spend a lot of time on that, but Steve Patrick brings dry ice, water, dirt, charcoal, rocks, all kinds of things that you might see in a comet, and they ball all this stuff up in a plastic bag of some sort and in a bucket, and it freezes. The dry ice freezes all this stuff instantly almost. And you take it out and it's spewing and fizzing and giving off a vapor and, you know, and it looks like a comet and the girls just really like that. So that's one of the things that we did. We also talked about exploring comets and here's some more of it. This is uh, putting the ingredients in. This is part of the process there. And this is Steve. And you'll see Steve later in the presentation on the Von Braun uh, group later. But he uh, is very interested in radio astronomy and he and James Brelsford are the two members of Von Braun who are uh, kind of encouraging all the uh, interest in radio astronomy there. Well, uh, you may not have known it, but the first uh, lady uh, female radio astronomer, as you see here, was Ruby Payne Scott in Australia. And it turns out that she developed uh, very early on, this was back in, you know, in the 1940s, mid-1940s, she developed some of the interferometric uh, methodologies that are used today, even yet today, at the VLA and the ALMA that uh, Lori was talking about this morning. So ladies and, and uh, females, women, involved in radio astronomy go all the way back to the mid-1940s. So there's a precedent set for these uh, girls to participate, and in a big way. And in, obviously, uh, these truths are self-evident because you saw Lori Wingate speaking this morning. She's the director of the NRAO Programs Directorate. has quite a lot of responsibility systems engineering, program management. So, you know, we've got a lot of potential, a potential to tap out there. These are just some of the slides that we used with the Girl Scouts. We gave them uh, an introduction. A lot of this uh, material, of course, comes out of the uh, NRAO and uh, out of the SARA Introduction to Radio Astronomy booklet that's out there. So we borrowed some from that and uh, uh, this is a copyrighted copyrighted photo taken by uh, Colin McCain who's a new SARA member and a student he's sitting in the audience today taking all this in and uh, uh, happy to be collecting his royalties on the picture he took here a couple of years ago uh, yeah <laughs> The blackmail is another way to put that. Uh, anyways, also, of course, we had our uh, Super SID station set up, and uh, later this afternoon I'll talk about what we're doing at Vaughn Brown. But that is one of three activities that we have on our schedule. We've already really got the antenna. Uh, as a matter of fact, Amelia helped build the loop antenna, sort of similar to what you see up here uh, for the Super SID, and we've already had that in operation. So. Uh, it was a very successful day. Of course, here's uh, Colin's famous photo that I was talking about, taken from the observation point out here a couple of years ago. Uh, we also talked about uh, professional radio astronomy along with the amateurs, and this is a report that uh, came out of uh, one of the SARA journals from last year. This was uh, done in conjunction with Lori and Linnea that she talked about, or one of her interns, one of the evenings that we were here uh, at that time. This was uh, during the time frame, I think, of the uh, 2015, maybe, Sarah meeting. Uh, anyways, we did a, uh, using the 40-foot telescope, we did some observations of uh, Virgo A. So we talked about how that goes. Of course, this is a picture from the VLA of Virgo. 
and discuss that with the girls and uh, talk about some really great questions and a lot of interest. Uh, so the, mes the message I would like to bring today is, as an educator, I would encourage all of you who are obviously enthusiastic about radio astronomy and maybe astronomy too, uh, take some time to mentor some children and it, you know, as soon as they're able to walk and talk, it's not, it's not too soon to introduce them to these ideas. Uh, if you wait, in education we find out if you wait to get kids interested in STEM subjects until they're juniors and seniors in high school, you've waited too late. They, they're already, their mind's off somewhere else. So uh, the sooner you can get them interested and kind of ignite a spark there, uh, we're, we're talking about our future. And I look around the audience and I don't see very many people uh, under the age of 10 or so in, in our audience today. So if we're going to sustain Sarah in the future, I think we really have to work at it because sooner or later we'll all be... Uh, too feeble probably to come to the annual meetings, uh, so we've got to get some younger people involved. Any questions or comments about this? Well, uh, like I say, I'm going to talk about this afternoon, uh, the Von Braun Astronomical Society in Huntsville, Alabama has been around since the 50s when Von Braun and the team came over as part of Project Paperclip, and uh, they have a lot of history in observational optical astronomy, but as far as I can tell, uh, it's just been recently with the involvement of the Sarah people, including Bowden came down and demonstrated one of the raster units, and that really ignited a spark right there that allowed us to do the RASIG, Radio Astronomy Special Interest Group. So thank you for your time, and uh, Go listen to something that you can't see. Are you involved with the uh, uh, production of raster now? The, uh, you've done the only involvement that we've had uh, last this meeting last year, uh, we were approached to help do some studies and so forth, and which we've done. And uh, the last thing we did, I'm going to be reporting on later. I think it's tomorrow that comes up. Was a strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats analysis on raster 2 slash 3 and of course it's moved in different directions I guess since then so I don't I don't foresee that we're going to be involved in it any longer I mean it was an academic study that we were happy to participate in and the students at the uh, undergrad and graduate level really benefit from a hands-on sort of real project of some time. We're uh, actually making something. Yes, or at least attempting to and planning to. So I think it was a really great exercise, but I don't know that we'll be involved in anything else. But great experience though, really. Got a great team, been working on raster. I know there it's a very, very difficult thing when the technology is uh, changing and evolving so rapidly without a dedicated, you know, 100-person team working these kind of problems, you're just about always behind the power curve. But I think they've done a great job, and uh, there's certainly no lack of dedication and love for the, the art than you have in your raster people. I'll say that. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much.